This weekend represents the traditional beginning of summer in the United States, the three-day weekend that's called Memorial Day. But of course, Memorial Day was not created as a way to commemorate the beginning of summer. It was created as the day that the nation sets aside to remember its war dead. It is a tradition with a long and powerful history, a history that deserves to be remembered. The tradition of decorating soldiers' graves with flowers is ancient. Ancient Greeks performed rituals over soldiers' graves that included the placement of flowers. If the flowers took root and bloomed, that was believed to be a sign that the warrior's soul had found happiness in the next world. The Romans observed a nine-day ritual called Parentalia that honored family ancestors and included the decoration of familial tombs with flowers. As part of the festival, roses and violets were placed on the tombs of fallen soldiers. The origins of Memorial Day in the United States, which was originally called Decoration Day, are actually a matter of some dispute, but there are parts of the story that are agreed upon. The first nationwide observance of the day was in 1868. John Alexander Logan, a major general in the Union Army during the Civil War, and in 1868 Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, a fraternal order of Civil War Union veterans, issued a proclamation calling for a decoration day to be observed annually and nationwide as a day to decorate the graves of Civil War dead, both Union and Confederate. The date of the observance was chosen to be May 30th because that was a day that was not the anniversary of any major battle of the war and yet flowers to decorate the graves would be in bloom all across the country. On the first nationally recognized decoration day in 1868, events were held in 183 cemeteries in 27 states. The role that John A. Logan, who was, in addition to being a major general and commander-in-chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, also a U.S. congressman, U.S. senator, and unsuccessful candidate for vice president of the United States, in creating a day to decorate the graves of war dead is particularly poignant. His son, Army Major John Alexander Logan Jr., was killed in combat on November 11, 1899, while leading his troops during the Philippine-American War. For the action, he was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor, one of the nation's heroes, whose sacrifices are memorialized on the holiday which his father played a central role in establishing. After the First World War, the meaning of the day was changed to memorialize all Americans who died in the service of their country, rather than just Civil War dead. It wasn't until after the Second World War that the name was more commonly recognized as Memorial Day, rather than Decoration Day. The Uniform Monday Holiday Act, enacted in 1968, officially changed Memorial Day to the last Monday in May, rather than always occurring on May 30th. The purpose of the act was to maximize three-day weekends for federal employees, and that decision is still controversial. Some people argue that by always making Memorial Day a three-day weekend, it changed the meaning of the day, so that now it is more of a leisure time to celebrate the beginning of summer, rather than a somber time set aside to remember the nation's war dead. There are several competing claims as to which community began the idea of a decoration day. In fact, more than two dozen communities in both the North and the South lay claim to the idea that they were the first community to set aside community time to decorate Civil War graves. The sheer number of Americans killed during this period led to many acts of community mourning. One candidate for the genesis of the holiday has been advanced by Yale University historian David Blight, who uncovered lost evidence of an event in Charleston, South Carolina on May the 1st of 1865. February 15th of that year, Confederate General P.G.T. Beauregard ordered the evacuation of Confederate forces from the city of Charleston in the face of the campaign of Union General William Tecumseh Sherman. The city's white population had largely evacuated, but thousands of black former slaves remained. Symbolically, the first Union troops to enter the city were black troops of the 21st Infantry Regiment and the 55th Massachusetts Infantry. On May the 1st, black workmen dug up and then proper, properly reinterred the bodies of 257 Union soldiers who had died in a Confederate prisoner of war camp in Charleston and who had been improperly buried in a hastily dug mass grave. The memorial was then celebrated by a parade of school children, citizens, and Union soldiers. Thus, Blight argues, Memorial Day was founded by African Americans in a ritual of remembrance and consecration that represented the fact that the Civil War was a victory of emancipation over a slaveholding republic. When the white aristocracy returned to Charleston, memory of the event was actively suppressed, and it essentially was lost to history until Blight rediscovered it in old period newspapers. While there is clear record that the event occurred, and it was undoubtedly an important event, the problem with Blight's claim that it was the foundation of Memorial Day is that it wasn't well known throughout the country, and thus was not likely to have inspired Logan to create the National Annual Remembrance in 1868. 
Still, it is an important part of the U.S. Memorial Day tradition, and it deserves to be remembered. Another candidate for the origin of the day occurred in Columbus, Georgia in 1866. While this may not have been the first time that a community in the South set aside time to decorate the graves of war dead, what gained national attention at the time was the fact that the community decorated the graves of both Confederate and Union war dead. Northern papers took notice. The Washington Intelligencer opined, The action of the ladies on this occasion in bearing whatever animosities or ill feeling may have been engendered in the late war towards those who fought against them is worthy of all praise and commendation. This widely reported act is seen by some historians to have inspired a movement of reconciliation that was part of the motivation behind Logan's 1868 proclamation. Others argue that Lincoln began the process of reconciliation and grave decoration when he dedicated the Gettysburg battlefield on November 19, 1863. For its part, in 1966, Congress officially recognized Waterloo, New York as the first community to set aside a community-wide annual observance of a day dedicated to honoring the war dead starting in 1866. The problem is that the Waterloo story is difficult to prove. Some historians argue that the Waterloo story is more legend than fact. Regardless of where the tradition started, one important part of the history of Memorial Day in the United States is the significant difference in which the day was celebrated in the North versus the South. In the period immediately following the Civil War, while the North tended to focus on the idea that Union soldiers had sacrificed themselves in the cause of freedom, Celebrations in the South increasingly turned towards supporting a set of beliefs referred to as the Lost Cause of the Confederacy. The idea of the Lost Cause minimized the role of slavery as a cause for the war and presented the Southern cause as a defensive and idyllic way of life from intrusion. Confederate soldiers and leaders were presented as if they were chivalric knights fighting against overwhelming odds. The tradition of commemorating war dead allowed an opportunity to reinforce this set of beliefs. The idea of the lost cause is significant in post-war America. While most historians agree that it reinforced white supremacist attitudes and helped the southern elite re-establish power, there's also wide agreement that the philosophy helped to heal over, or at least to plaster over, the wounds of the war during the difficult period of Reconstruction, and helped to move the nation back to the unity of purpose which would be required to face the challenges of the coming century. The narrative, however, ignored many historical realities, and that can be seen in modern conflicts today over things like the display of the Confederate battle flag or Confederate monuments. What it most means to this historian is that the issues that drove the conflict of the U.S. Civil War did not magically disappear when the Confederate armies surrendered. And the fact that those issues are still around today is all the more reason why we should learn and know the history that is intertwined with the way that our nation commemorates its war debt. Memorial Day is unique in the way that Americans understand our history. It is a rare day that is set aside for Americans to remember their history, and yet its cause and date harken back to the most divisive period in our history. And it also symbolizes the sacrifice and heroism on behalf of our most revered values. Such shared values ground our national identity. Perhaps one of the best ways to understand Memorial Day is to understand the surprisingly little-known flag tradition of more Memorial Day. By tradition, on the morning of Memorial Day, the United States flag is briskly dropped to the top of the staff and then solemnly lowered to half-staff in recognition of the more than one million men and women who sacrificed their lives in the service of our country. But then, at noon, the flag is again drawn to the top of the staff as a symbol that the living are resolute in not allowing that the sacrifice of our war dead will have been in vain and a promise that we will rise up in their stead and continue the fight for the cause of liberty and justice. Around the world, nations remember their fallen soldiers in different ways. Many of them set aside time to do so on November 11th, which is the anniversary of the armistice that ended the Great War. We recognize that in the United States as Veterans Day, where as Memorial Day remembers those who died serving in the United States Armed Forces, Veterans Day remembers all those who served in the U.S. Armed Forces. I'd like to dedicate this episode to my great uncle George, who my dad is named after and who I always thought I would have liked, but I never got to meet. He's one of the more than a million American young men who marched off to war and never came home, who deserve to be remembered. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. 
If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section and I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on Forgotten History, all you need to do is subscribe.